Today, I thought I'd share some classic everyday farmhouse decor ideas for you that are easy to do, and you should be able to find most of these items or something similar at your local Dollar Tree or craft store. I appreciate y'all stopping by my channel, and if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is Our Gray House. I saw this little chalkboard sign and crate. Both should currently be in Dollar Tree and I knew that I wanted to make a little planter. This is a really easy project and takes hardly any time at all. I'm staining the crate and the wood around the chalkboard with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I just paint it on and then I use a damp rag to wipe off the excess and it dries pretty quickly. I cut out a decal using my Cricut that says Mayflowers and I'm applying it to the chalkboard. I've said this a bunch, but honestly, if you don't have a Cricut, you could use stickers or chalk pens or trace on the letters, use a paint pen. There's a variety of ways to add the words on. After I got the decal transferred on, I'm now gonna be hot gluing in some floral foam to the bottom of the crate. I start adding in some floral stems that I got from Dollar Tree and just kind of start filling up the crate. Obviously, I'm not a floral designer, so I'm just tucking them in in various spots and adjusting as I go. I then attach the sign to the crate by running a bead of hot glue at the bottom and then gluing it to the top of the back of the crate. I kind of turned around to make sure I have it in the right spot. And then I just arrange the flowers until I think they look pretty and still able to see the decal on the chalkboard. Yeah, this turned out so cute, but there's a but. <laughs> I decided I wanted something more generic on the chalkboard. I mean, it says Mayflowers and that won't really work like in August, you know what I mean? So I remove all of the vinyl and I did use permanent vinyl, but it did pull up pretty easily. I used a bit of that awesome cleaner from Dollar Tree to remove any of the gummy residue. And it's like called awesome cleaner or something, something like that. I mean, it is awesome, but it's also awesome cleaner. And then I made a new decal that says hello friends with my Cricut and I'm going to be transferring that on. And I noticed while I was transferring the decal that I had forgotten to weed the bottom of the S and the F. So I had to go back and do that. This is how it turned out, take two. I think it looks so pretty. Now it's not specific to a season or anything like that and by quickly changing out the florals, you can customize it to your taste. I'm gonna be giving this tray a makeover and I'm starting off by covering the handles with jute twine. This part takes a while, but I think it adds a nice touch. I use a lighter to burn off the loose strands and clean it up just a bit. The next step is to paint the bottom of the tray white. My plan was to Mod Podge this sheet of tissue paper that I got from Dollar Tree to the bottom of the tray. I measured it out and I started to Mod Podge it down, but I didn't put enough Mod Podge down and it wasn't an even coat. It was just not working out. So I did my base, best to scrape off what I could and then I added another coat of paint. Now this coat is not as smooth, so there's, there's that going for it, but I'm hoping it won't be too noticeable. And what I decided to do was cut the tissue paper into like little squares and kind of mod podge those down, overlapping, you know, that's all okay. I wanted it to be random and not a specific pattern. And this is how it turned out. I added another coat of mod podge on top to further seal it. So, um, cause I'm gonna have it on my porch, but I think it looks so cute quick crafting break. If you haven't joined my Facebook crafting group, Crafty DIYs on a Budget, please check out the description box below. My friend Sarah from Jujube DIY and I run it and we would love to have y'all join. This sign was 90% off Hobby Lobby clearance find that I've had in my stash in a while. 
It doesn't go with my decor as it is, so I'm just taping it off and prepping it to paint. I gave it two coats of Apple Barrel paint in the color white. And of course, the most satisfying part is removing that painter's tape. And I bought this Forgot Your Phone decal off. I guess it was probably like design bundles or something. Anyway, I'm just carefully removing the decal, being extra careful that I don't miss any of the tiny letters. It was a little tricky. <laughs> I applied the decal and then worked on pulling back the transfer tape. And I worked slowly because I didn't want to mess this up. I didn't want to, yeah, I just didn't want to mess it up. This is, I guess kind of obviously, hanging in my bathroom. And I think it turned out great. And I'll hang up some more prints around it to make it kind of a gallery wall in my bathroom. I found this little sign at Dollar Tree. It's cute, but I wanted to try a sign I saw Shannon from Shannon's Crafty DIYs do, so I removed the stickers. And I sawed up the top portion, and I'm gonna give it a coat of white paint. Do y'all recognize this rub on transfer? It's a popular one from Dollar Tree, and I'm using the wreath circle in the middle for this DIY. When I placed this rub on transfer on and rubbed it on, when I went to lift it, it wasn't transferring correctly. And no matter what I tried, I couldn't get all the leaves to transfer. And I'm not sure why. When I, point, uh, when I painted it, I used acrylic paint instead of the chalk paint. So maybe it was it, I don't know. I thought I let it dry all the way, but I still couldn't get the transfer to completely transfer over. So as you can see, the leaf coverage is splotchy. Well, you really can't see it because my hands are in the way, but I used the rest of the rub on transfers to fill in the gaps. In Shannon's video that I'll link below, she put two cute carrots and the idea is that this is an interchangeable sign. She used Velcro dots and I couldn't find any and I couldn't find quite the right piece for the center of this wreath, so for now, this is going to have to do. I've got another idea of a variation of this, so you'll have to stay tuned for that as well. This is how it turned out, and I'm going to play around with the centerpiece, but feel free to comment below your ideas on what I should put in the middle. This is a plastic tray from Dollar Tree. I didn't film this part, but all I have done so far to this point is paint it with Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I've also put a thin layer of Mod Podge on the bottom of the tray. Now I'm taking these napkins, which are also from Dollar Tree, to kind of see how they're gonna fit and where I wanna place them. Now I'm just kind of fussy cutting around what will be the flowers that are going to lay in the middle of the tray. And fussy cutting, it just means like detail cutting. I'm just trying to cut around the flowers a little bit. These are two ply napkins, so you do have to tear them apart gently because you're only going to use one ply. And then, I'm not sure where I got this idea, but I spray the napkins with a water bottle filled with water after the Mod Podge that I had put down earlier. Okay, and the Mod Podge. I'm trying to figure out what I'm. The Mod Podge that I put down earlier was still tacky, so I'm trying to gently lay it down in the tray. And then right into the next <laughs> Um, I got one half layer down, as you can see, and now I'm putting down the other side. I'm just trying to lay it down gently and tap it into place. I don't mind the wrinkles, but, you know, I'm trying to minimize them if I can. And I wanted to put some little feet on this, and I just hot glued some beads to the bottom four corners of the tray. And this is how this sweet little tray turned out. I love it, but I'm wondering, do you think I should paint those beads? And if so, should I paint them plaster or black or another color? 
This strand of beads is from Dollar Tree. I haven't seen them in a long time, so if you happen to see them, you better snatch those puppies up. Of course, if you don't have them in your store, you can buy beads on Amazon or from like Hobby Lobby or something. This little house is from the Target dollar spot, I think one or two Christmases ago, and I'm just attaching it to one end of the beads. I wanted to hide the end of the twine, so I put a dab of hot glue on the end to kind of stiffen it up, and then I just thread it back through the beads on that end. With Captain's help. Oh, that's socks. That's not even Captain. I only wanted about 30 beads on there, so I removed the rest, and of course, I'm saving them for later. And then I'm just gonna add a twine tassel. I wrap the twine around my hand around 30 times, and then I use the other end of the bead strand to tie it off. And I try to get it as close to the beads as I can, because I don't really like when there's like a gap there. So you just gotta kind of maneuver it around to, so you can get it as close as you can. I take another piece of jute twine and tie it around towards the top to create the head of the tassel. And then you just cut the bottom loop so you give it a haircut <laughs> and you trim the ends so they are all about the same length. And this is how it turned out. A strand of beads is classic farmhouse, and this one is so easy to make. This project is the one that should have been super easy. I mean, it still kind of was, but also I ran into some snacks. This house is from Hobby Lobby, and it was on major clearance a while back. And from experience, I know that I can't just paint over what is on the front, so I sand the heck out of it. And once I got it sanded to my liking, I painted it with Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. So I took this rub on transfer and was gonna put it on the house. And I was thinking to use it as kind of a background filler piece for my tear tray. And I had it laid out like I liked, but then when I went to rub it on, it all didn't transfer correctly. And then the words messed up. And with the rub on transfer, you can't just start over and it was going to be, it was just going to be too hard to sand off the portions of the words that were messed up. So I just decided to start over and sanded it all off. I gave it another coat of the plaster paint and then cut out a decal that says, but most of all, we love each other. Breeze Arts just did something similar and I thought it was so cute. I'll link her video below so you can see what she did. And I just transfer it on and it works like a charm. To jazz it up a bit, I do add some jute twine around and add a little bow. Here's the final reveal. I did add some greenery to it as I thought, like, you know, needed a little bit of color, but I think it turned out cute. I've got this terracotta pot from Dollar Tree and I'm giving it a good coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. This DIY is so easy. <laughs> After painting, now I'm just wrapping some jute twine around the top of the pot. I'm adding some dots of hot glue to keep it in place, and I add a little more on the top of the rim to make sure it stays put. But you're basically just wrapping it around. Very, very easy. I do burn off the little stray strands to make it look a little bit neater. Be careful if you use that though. And I got this set of alphabet stamps a while back from the Target dollar spot. Now, if you don't have stamp letters like this, you could use stickers or handwrite it on there. I'm just adding the word grow to the pot. I absolutely love how this turned out. I do plan on planting a real plant, but for now, I popped in some greenery and added a twine bow to finish it off. This is it y'all, DIY number nine. It's another everyday farmhouse classic. I'm taking this crate that you can find at Dollar Tree and staining it with Waverly Wax in the color antique. 
Now all you have to do is apply the wax, I'm painting it on, and then wipe it off with a damp cloth. Some people use like a baby wipe, but I use a scrap cloth and then I just try to reuse it as much as I can. Now that it's all dry, I'm gonna apply this decal that says Home Sweet Home. I cut it out with my Cricut, but you could hand write it or, or use stickers or stencil. <laughs> you could do a lot of things. And as per usual, I'm wrapping some jute twine around one end and securing it with hot glue. I added some greenery and a little piece of faux lavender to top it off. I think a book stack is classic farmhouse and I love how this one turned out. Thank y'all again so much for joining me today as I crafted. I really do appreciate your company and you being here. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications. You guys know what to do. Um, just thanks so much for being here. And don't forget, if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.